And welcome back for part two here, folks. Uh, the lesson's actually one little technique, and we'll see two places where it's uh, fun to use. Actually, it's appropriate to use it in two different places. Uh, we're asked to differentiate a very strange-looking function, x to the exponent x. And so you're probably wondering, okay, is this like a, is this a polynomial function like this? Is this, is this what I'm trying to do? Because the base is an x. I know how to take the derivative of that. That's just the exponent comes down, and then I subtract. That's all good. I, you know, fine. Or is it an exponential function where I can take the? I know how to take the derivative of it. It's just the function itself times the ln of the base because now the unknown is in the exponent, and I know how to do that. Is that? Is it that? Well, no. It's neither of these and both. Uh, so how do we actually do it? Well we have to develop a new technique. And the new technique is called logarithmic differentiation. And it ain't too tough. It goes just like this. Um, with this function, I, what I need to do is I need to change the form a little bit. And how I do that is I take the log of both sides. And the reason why the log of both sides helps is because it gets the unknown out of the exponent. And back on get ground floor here, I use a log rule. The x comes down in front. And then this function and this function are the same, but written in a different form. And now I can take the derivative. I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x here. Um, notice that on the right side, I've got now a product rule, right? i got uh, something and something. So derivative of the first thing, uh, write down the second thing, plus write down the first thing, derivative of the second thing. Um, and then I'm going to tidy that up next step. Now, when I take the derivative of the left-hand side, well, what's the derivative of... of ln of y, it's 1 over y, but y is a function of x, right? y is a function of x, so I, it's a chain rule. i got to have to take the derivative, and this is where that implicit differentiation business came. Um, and then now notice, uh, I can tidy up the right-hand side. x times 1 over x is just 1. If I want to get y alone, eventually I'm going to need to multiply by, uh, y, so I want to get y prime alone, so I have the derivative multiply by y, and there's a, the derivative of f at x uh, de defined implicitly, but remember, y is just x to the exponent x, so if I wanted to, to write that in the final form, x to the exponent x times the ln of x plus 1, that's the derivative. And this technique, this what we did, of taking the log and then taking the derivative, this here, this process, is called logarithmic differentiation. And when is it useful? It's useful in this sort of function when I have uh, the independent variable in the base and in the exponent. It's, it's kind of both of these things. Take the log of both sides and then take the derivative. Logarithmic differentiation differentiation. Good. And there's another spot where we want to use it. It's Look at this awful thing. Um, you could have done this function back, uh, taking the derivative of this um, back when um, we first did derivative shortcuts in chapter 2, but it would have been awful. Notice that overall it's a quotient rule, right? Because we got two big things and they're divided. But in the top, when I wanted to take the derivative of the top here, it's a product rule. It's this thing and this thing. But both the ovals and the rectangles are both chain rule. So to take this derivative chapter 2 style it would be a quotient rule then a pro and in the top a product rule and two chain rules in the product rule. Awful, 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 awful. And uh, I'll show you how it tidies up. Now, notice here that since we want a, a specific value, we want the slope of this function at x equals 1, we can sort of chicken out at any point once we've taken the derivative and sub in x equals 1. So that's available to us. So right now, actually, before I forget, I'm going to calculate the y value just so that uh, later on I can substitute the y value in too because I know um, probably I'll want the, the, the y value for, for a point. That's I know usually we need the y value when we find the slope of a tangent, but... Oh, well, I'm, I'm going to do this now. So that's 1 plus 3 uh, times 1 plus 1 to the exponent 3 all over. And what, 
bop, bada bing, bada boom, bing, 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 four. So that's two times uh, eight over one, that's 16. So when x is one, y is uh, positive 16. All right, I'm not going to take the derivative yet. I'm going to take the log of both sides. Actually, the lawn of both sides, um, it's tidier, isn't it? Because I don't have to worry about the lawn of the base. So I'm going to take the lawn of both sides, and hopefully this cleans up for us a little bit, and we'll see that it does. Remember, when I have the log of some stuff that's multiplied or divided on the inside, I can use log rules to split it up. When it's multiplying on the inside, it's adding on the outside. Uh, and when it's divide on the inside, it's subtract on the outside. And this doesn't look like it's going to be too much fun to take the derivative either, but we'll see it's not bad. In fact, it's getting better all the time. It looks like I've got a, a chain rule here, right? Because I got an inside thing with a square root. But remember, I can use log rules, right? And then that can come on front. I still haven't taken any derivatives yet, right? The three can come down. In fact, I'm going to save a step here and go back. There's, we can't tidy this up. I can't split this up at all because uh, there's no log rules when it's adding and subtracting on the inside. Uh, I'm going to save a step here and write that one half out front. Are you okay with that, I hope? Good. Dandy. Uh, let's move this out of the way. You, you go up there for now. Now I'm going to take the derivative. So from here to here, take the derivative with respect to x. I'm going to differentiate. Uh, on the left-hand side, same thing as the is the question we just did. The derivative of ln y is 1 over y, but it's a chain rule because uh, y is a function of x, so we have got to take y prime, and that's where we're going to get our derivative from. Um, here, what's the derivative of this? Well, the number a half just kicks around out front. It's just a scalar multiple. And then the derivative of ln over or ln of x plus 3 is just 1 over x plus 3. Take the derivative of the inside thing, and it's just 1. See, that's not so bad. What was a chain rule with a square root just became a half in front. That's pretty good. Uh, same thing here, 3. Derivative of this is just 1 over that. Uh, derivative of this is 1 over this big, long thing. Now, when I take the derivative of the inside part, there is actually a little bit of work to do. So the multiply by the derivative of the inside thing, which is 6x minus 4. That goes on the top when I want to tidy. And notice at any point, remember, at any point I want to chicken out of my tidying, I can put in x equals 1 and y equals 16. So for instance, I could write in what y is 16 right now, because I want the derivative, I want y prime when x equals 1. Okay, well, fine. I'm going to tidy up just a, just a tiny bit here. Notice that if we were setting this equal to zero, we'd probably get a common denominator and do all that business, but I'm not going to do that because I'm ready to substitute in x equals 1 and get the, uh, be get the business here. One, I'm going to leave the 16 on this side. Why not? Uh, 2, 1 plus 3 there, and 1 plus 1. Probably you could do some of this on your calculator if you liked. This whole thing ended up being just 1, I think, didn't it? Uh, so I have 1 over 2 times 4 is 8, plus uh, 3 over 2. Fractions galore here. 6 minus 4 is 2 over 1. But when I multiply by 16, all of those, I mean, multiply by 16, all those fractions disappear nicely. Uh, 16 divided by 2 is 8 times 3 is 24, uh, minus 32, arithmetic, arithmetic. Yeah, you can use your calculator. I don't like reaching for my calculator. I told you that before. 2 plus 24 is 26, minus 32, 32, not 36. 16 times 2 is 32. Uh, 26 minus 32 is negative 6. So therefore, the slope is minus 6. The slope of that of that function, does that sound right? Yep. Of this function at x equals 1 is minus 6. And 
you know, check my arithmetic, make fun of me in class if I, if I goofed it up, check it on Desmos. Fire that in, see if the slope at x equals 1 is minus 6, which would be a steep downhill uh, slope. Hopefully we uh, didn't goof that up. All right, homework time.